My book involves uh, three different days in the lives of three different women, a contemporary Clarissa Dalloway, who is very much like Wolf's Mrs. Dalloway, but is alive right now at the, at the turn of the century and is free to do and be everything that was denied Wolf's Clarissa Dalloway. She's free to raise a child with another woman, to uh, have a job that matters to her and to the world, uh, to question the, the social order. Um, second is a housewife named Laura Brown in Los Angeles, uh, just after World War II, who is married to a nice man who's simply not the right man for her, has a child and another on the way, and is desperately unhappy, more unhappy than, than, than even she quite realizes, and on this day has begun reading Mrs. Dalloway and finds such solace, such companionship in it that she sneaks off, she leaves her child with a neighbor, sneaks off and rents a hotel room to be alone, to read the book very much the way another kind of person might sneak off uh, to meet a lover. And the third, the, the sort of strand from which I just want to read for a little while tonight is an imagined day in the life of Virginia Woolf in the, in the 1920s when she, more than half suspecting that she was merely an eccentric, um, writing at a time when women were not really expected to produce great literature, set down the first lines of a book that will be read as long as books are read. One thing I should tell you is that when she started Mrs. Dalloway, Virginia Woolf believed she was writing the story of an outwardly ordinary, upper-class London woman who would commit suicide, very much the way, of course, Woolf herself did some 25 years later. And in the writing of the book, she found that that was not actually what Clarissa Dalloway would do and invented a sort of doppelganger character who committed suicide in her stead. But on this day, she's still sort of debating about the fate of Clarissa Dalloway and thinking that she will be someone who will end her life. <clears throat> she walks up Mount Ararat Road, planning Clarissa Dalloway's suicide. Clarissa will have had a love, a woman, or a girl, rather. Yes, a girl she knew during her own girlhood. One of those passions that flare up when one is young, when love and ideas seem truly to be one's personal discovery, never before apprehended in quite this way during that brief period of youth when one feels free to do or say anything, to shock, to strike out, to refuse the future that's been offered and demand another far grander and stranger, devised and owned wholly by oneself owing nothing to old Aunt Helena, who sits every night in her accustomed chair and wonders aloud whether Plato and Morris are suitable reading for young women. Clarissa Dalloway, in her first youth, will love another girl, Virginia thinks. Clarissa will believe, will believe that a rich, riotous future is opening before her, but eventually, how exactly, will the change be accomplished? She will come to her senses, as young women do, and marry a suitable man. Yes, yeah, she'll come to her senses and marry. So, Michael, I was wondering if you would talk a little bit about where you're from, where you grew up. Be, well, that I'd be would happy be great. To. That's, that an, e that's great. an easy one. Well, nothing, there are no easy ones, really. <laughs> uh, you know, I guess I grew up in L.A., in the suburbs. Um, and I don't know, I guess I'm... I was sort of a slacker um, <laughs> who sort of invented the character of a novelist and then grew up and, and became that. Um, there's not much in my childhood to indicate that I would end up on a stage talking about books in, in Santa Fe. Um, <laughs> I would just my, my family wasn't especially isn't especially bookish and and I wasn't especially as as a kid there we there we were it was Pasadena um, the the deep burbs this is this is this is not a minor burb this is a major burb um, 
And you know, there's, this, there's this great story about how Susan Sontag grew up in, um, this, in suburban Arizona and among, in, in, a, in a house without books in it. And for, just after she was old enough to walk, she kind of wandered out into the desert till she found a <laughs> library and like, read all the books in it. I was not similarly precocious. <laughs> Um, I was much more interested in, in, in music. I wanted to be a rock star. Um, I, I want, well, I, I either wanted to be, I wanted to be either Leonard Cohen or, or Jim Morrison or some hybrid of the two. <laughs> and you are. Thank you, thank you. I do my, I do my best. Um, and I actually read Wolf, Mrs. Dalloway in particular, um, almost by accident in high school. Somebody sort of shoved it at me and said, here, read this and try to be a little less stupid, okay? <laughs> and I wasn't entirely sure I wanted to be less stupid. Um, but I did read it and had no idea what it was about. Not a clue. 